Alright, so good morning. On this uh, tutorial I want to show you a few of the ways that you can use the uh, fill tool or um, the rectangle or oval fills with the gradient. Uh, so essentially we're talking gradient fill. Uh, let me first switch to the layout which has the two column toolbar. There you go. Alright, so um, there's a couple of ways to fill a, a, a region. Uh, first of all, you can use the um, rectangular fill and you, you do want to, don't click it in the upper left, but click in the lower right corner. The lower right half makes it the filled version. Okay, the upper left would make it a rectangular outline with whatever your current brush is. That's not what we want in this case. So let's go and erase and then go to the fill tool and that will fill. And as you can see in this new version, actually I think since version six, it, it fills it on the fly directly as you, as you drag. Uh, in the past, I think it would just show the uh, selection outline and then uh, when you let go, it would fill it. Now, this is not the gradient fill. Um, so there are some additional options you need to work with. One is which gradient to use and you see that option here when you have that tool selected. You see that option also in other cases such as with the uh, fill tool. The fill tool has the fill settings and the gradients here too. And there's a papers option as well. Um, so let's have a look at uh, how you select the gradients and that's one way to do it right here. You can select the gradient tool and actually it will show you additional options, the gradient editor and the sweep editor. But the gradient tool has a number of great presets. Um, let's say we want something that goes from dark like this one here, black, going to white and then back to dark again. So let's say I'm staying with this tool, the rectangular fill, and I'm filling it, still nothing happens. Okay, it doesn't use the gradient just because I select a gradient. You have the choice of which gradient you want to use, but you also have to indicate that you actually want to use it. And there are a couple of reasons for that. So the fill settings is going to address that. The fill settings gives you a couple of ways to actually fill it. There is a whole group here for, for pattern fill. The pattern fill lets you choose a pattern and then you can say uh, that you actually want to use it. Just just choosing that pattern, again, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to use it. So for instance, if you take this grid pattern, uh, this brick pattern here, um, that doesn't mean that it's actually using it. You can still fill with the plain color. Uh, but if you say, okay, let's go here, click this, and now it selects the pattern fill mode, it will now fill it with that pattern. And again, you see it fills it directly on the fly with that pattern. Um, there's other patterns to choose from, and that's certainly a great way to put a little bit of life in your uh, composition. You can choose the color, it doesn't make a difference here anymore because it's not using the color anymore, it's using the pattern to fill this. Um, you can have it warp, you can have it uh, vertically warp, you can have it uh, warp and fill in both directions. So um, there's a, a great number of ways to use it with the fill pattern. Now the same thing goes with the gradient fill. And this is really where you are by default. This one here, the plain color fill, is the one that we have by default. Okay, so the moment we go and choose a pattern fill, that's when we get to use the pattern. No matter which one we choose, we have to actually tell it to use which uh, one of the pattern modes. And um, <clears throat> if you do want um, the gradient fill, just the same thing. So the gradient uh, can go in a horizontal mode. And now here we have the gradient we had selected earlier. Right, so if, for instance, I want the whole area or much of the image to be filled with this gradient, I just drag across it, and there we go. And then I can drag another one here on top. So this is a great way to make buttons, interactive buttons, you know, for user interfaces and stuff like that. You uh, select a gradient, and then you uh, give it some sort of a, a rectangular fill region. Gradients that uh, kind of cycle are really great for that. Gradients that will have a bright edge and a, on either side and a dark in the middle or, or vice versa, typically a dark on one side and then a bright edge on the other side uh, or in the middle. Um, so for instance, this one here that goes from dark to bright to dark, that would be a good one to use for uh, all sorts of interactive buttons, but not in this vertical layout. Most typically you would want it to kind of go uh, perhaps in a, in a vertical range rather than horizontal sideways. So here again, with the fill, settings, 
you get to choose uh, not to go in a horizontal but have the gradient vertically and now in this case we got this layout so that's perhaps one that you could use quite nicely for uh, graphical user interfaces because then you can t put your text on top of that um, there's a couple of other ways to fill it you have the circular gradient fill and that one needs two clicks the first one to indicate the whole range and then the second one kind of where the center goes um, off from the, from the actual center of your selection. So if you go like this, uh, this one now actually is doing this in an interactive mode, but you can still redo it and place it in the middle. Um, so for instance, if I'm gonna go like this into all the way the image and then put it roughly in the middle, then I get a nice circular gradient filling this entire selection. Let's do another one here and click the middle. There you go. And you don't have to click the middle necessarily with this gradient, you could click the the right corner and it will center it there. Um, there's other gradients, there's the one that warps. Now when you have a rectangular fill it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference, right? I mean you have it this way or you have it this way, that's almost looking like the same thing. But when you do see a difference is if your region is actually a different shape. Uh, particularly if you use the fill tool, right? the flood fill tool and you actually have constructed a more complex shape for the uh, selection. For instance with the lasso to alpha, Right, let's say we erase everything here and then we, we create a lasso shape like this and now if you use the horizontal gradient fill uh, and you go with the fill tool to fill it in there it will fill horizontally without any um, adaptation or adjustments to that outline um, however if you go and use the, the warp fill it will do something a little bit different and it will try to adjust and you see how it curves here now sometimes it has a little bit difficulty doing that because there's some some very tight squeeze in this area here um, but that's still something that might be of real use in some cases um, a couple of other ways to use that is in the vertical direction and then there's also one that tries to warp in both directions so that might be really useful if you have some shapes uh, I don't know something like more of an oval with a little kink on the side and uh, you still want to fill that. Plain color fill is the default, warp or, or any of these gradients fills. Now if you want to fill it again over the existing one but maybe only the bright section you need to work with some of those other parameters here like the tolerance and tell it a little bit hey it's okay to go uh, you know fill it outside of just the selected color and then that way it will also find a couple of other areas to fill. Alright, so that uh, brings it into a very quick intro to filling with gradients. Um, there are many other tools and sub-tools to use and experiment with. We have the mode here, which is to say not just replacing the color, that's the default, but perhaps do a subtractive or a multiply mode or additive mode. So in that case you get many other colors than the ones you actually have in a gradient because it's subtracting them from the original existing ones. And of course, uh, even better if you do uh, other stuff like you enable that with the mirror. You enable the mirror tool here too. And then you get uh, even more sophistication out of that uh, particular pattern that we create with that. Perhaps some butterflies' wings or <laughs> fancy sound shades. Uh, lots of ways to play with these. There's also some dithering options, mono, and the tooltip will give you some clue. Uh, gradients, I didn't show you everything on the gradients quite yet. That's a whole universe in itself, but you can see, for instance, when you go to one of these tools, in addition to the fill tools, there's the gradient tool, as I mentioned earlier. And rather than just pre uh, selecting the presets, one thing you could do is click the gradient editor here, and with that you can create your own gradients. Uh, so you can <coughs> select the color that you want for the next step and uh, select another one here, perhaps drag it down a little bit, <coughs> set the color for that one. Uh, so that's one way to create a gradient. There are other ways and um, one other way that I like a lot that I like to show here in this case is the sweep editor. Um, which is essentially a tool to make the gradient sweep from left to right and you can go and say how much the value needs to change or just the red component or the green component over here uh, or the blue and then also the opacity so you can make it go from fully opaque to fully transparent opaque or transparent again a few times you can do a couple of clicks here and that will give you uh, sort of a, a fan or a uh, comb of uh, transparent and opaque sections and uh, there's many ways to further fine-tune that like um, 
the, the fill tool here to do smoothing. You have many presets. You can load all sorts of presets of gradients. Um, so let's go back with the default gradient and uh, navigate through some of these. There's uh, eight presets in each group. And let's say, for instance, this one. And or let's say this one here. Let's say we use this as a uh, horizon. So I'm going to delete the Let's see where is it here the selection clear the alpha uh, delete my image and then I'll just click with the fill tool using this current gradient into this background and uh, I don't need the uh, the tolerance plus I don't need the um, mirror that I still have enabled let's go disable that and clear and enable that uh, with the fill clear and go all right so now with that uh, maybe I need it not uh, going sideways again. That's done with the fill settings, and I need it vertically. So there you go. Erase that, and I got my fill going um, to to show. Oh, and it's upside down, right? I want the brown colors um, down on the ground, the earth colors, if you want, and then the sky blue would be at the top. I mean, this is unless unless we're simulating uh, some sort of a very polluted air uh, condition uh, and some water surface on the bottom. Uh, let's go and uh, mirror that, and that's the reverse gradient option right here. So script, uh, uh, switch that around, and then perhaps um, we can use again that rectangular fill if you want to fill it from here, lower right, and then you actually get to control how low you go and where the horizon needs to be placed. All right, so let's put it around here, and that would be a quick intro to how to fill a region with a gradient. Um, there are a couple of more to explore and I'll let you try that when you right click this tool here uh, right not the line tool not I mean this one's the linear tool and then there's the curve tool but there is one here called the gradients linear tool actually an earlier version of dog waffle I think those two tools were merged together into one but what you need to do is right click that and there you'll see additionals right the linear gradient tool allows you to do a linear gradient with that current gradient that we have selected now if you make it transparent in some areas like if you choose the opacity tab right there you make it go down low and down low down here but then uh, fully opaque for the rest of it uh, that allows you to avoid erasing on the edge because those parts are transparent so it doesn't block the rest of the image if you only contain it in a small area um, there's a couple of other uh, circular gradient mode same thing where you can make little eyes or dots or circles and that's really a, a funny one to use when you have actually a couple of areas that are more or less opaque and maybe it's moved a little bit so you kind of see through that right now you see through those areas where there is opacity going down to non 100 percent we have the opacity going down to zero in some cases so full transparency um, <clears throat> something i like to do actually with that is to go perhaps um, temporarily jump to the swap buffer and uh, draw one of those right and then pick it up as a custom brush something like this and uh, pick that up so we now have that in a, in a stored brush here and we can enable in the brush tools uh, settings we can enable the post effects right there for transparency or for the shadow rather and perhaps enable the shadow to be really well visible so now as we paint it draws and let's make sure we paint with full opacity there you go it, it casts a shadow underneath it there too so let's go back to um, to our original image right there and place a couple of those on top you can make them also smaller <laughs> and so to cast a shadow right on that that adds a nice little 3d depth perception to that Alright, and that's it for the quick way of uh, exploring uh, the gradient fill. Uh, again, you will want to try a few more gradient modes. Linear Alpha Fader has some uh, relationship to filling with gradients as well, although it goes into the Alpha channel. Uh, but those two here are quite important in that whole category or universe of gradient fills as well. Alright, well I hope this helped and um, thanks for watching.